Yeah, good evening everyone and welcome to a little podcast thing. Yeah. Yes. Hello and welcome everybody. Today we're here. This is Marlene talking and today we have a very special guest and let's cheer to Rudy uh, and Sierra Chest. Hello, Rudy. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you for inviting me. Well, we're pretty excited because you just had your 10th anniversary. And I think we've well, met yeah. about 10 years ago on YouTube when you started out with it. Uh, yeah, I do recall. We actually did a, a video together uh, back when uh, The Silver Lining was released. You and oh. you and Marlene, I remember that oh, one. Oh, God, yes, I remember that. And nobody understood what we did. And we landed on last place or so. But <laughs> it was great fun. And uh, I don't know if they will ever finish it because I would. That was that is just one game which I would love to let's play, is Silver Lining, but only when it's finished. Uh, I also did, partially inserted it on um, the Sierra Chest website, um, also hoping that uh, it will ever get finished. We're just waiting for one final chapter, and right. uh, I hope uh, you know uh, it will see the light of, of day. Yes, so do I. So, And... uh, Rudy, I sent you the uh, YouTube live link um, for the stream. Yeah. Then you uh, can yes. click yeah. on it and um, watch the stream on YouTube, if you want, on YouTube. Uh, I'm just using the... Uh, uh, watching it on, on uh, Discord. That's what we are currently using. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay that's so um, yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, the video, the, the the stream stays on YouTube and on Twitch when the stream is ready. So um, everyone who is watching the stream after the live thing here, uh, yeah, please send us please send us questions uh, if you want in the comment section down below and yeah. Yeah, and let's get started. So, Rudy, let's uh, let's talk about yourself first. Um, uh, when were you born? Um, where were you born? What got you into the Sierra thing? Let's talk about that first. Uh, well, I was born in the, in Belgium in the mid seventies. Okay. Uh, but right now, the last uh, since since uh, the last sixteen years, I've, I've uh, been living in Slovenia. Uh, my wife is Slovene, so I moved uh, from Belgium to, to Slovenia, and I've, I've been there ever since. It's a great country. Uh, um, really that, that's quite unusual because everybody moves to the West or to Spain or to whatever, Italy or France, but not to Slovenia. What made you move there, if I may ask? Well, uh, I was uh, back in when I was at uh, university. I was in a university uh, in student organization, international student organization called ISEC, which... Uh, Uh, this basically exchange of students from one country to another. So I was doing a lot of uh, traveling around Europe, uh, particularly to Ireland. But then at one point, uh, I've met um, uh, a lady from uh, Slovenia coming to visit in Belgium. She invited me over to Slovenia with, with a bunch of people that was in the late 90s. Uh, well, from one thing came another, and then I just kept going to Slovenia. And now we're married for 15 years. So. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. So that, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. And is your wife into Sierra games as well? Not at all. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, she, she's probably the, the most tolerant woman on the planet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> with, with regard to with regard to, to video games, yes, because she, she never plays them or, or anything. But uh, yeah, she, she fully supports uh, what I do. I mean, she uh, you know she doesn't mind that I'm uh, almost every day uh, working on, on Sierra games, playing Sierra games, or recording Sierra games, or or working on the side, always tapping on my computer, you know, so. Uh, but right. she, she herself, she's, she's really not into it. Okay, well, well, that's, that's okay. So you, you don't have to do let's plays with her or anything. 
Oh. I've seen some couples do it, and uh, and it's amazing. Do you have you ever heard of Delando three thousand? He's a guy from Holland, and he lives somewhere in California, I believe. And he did a lot of let's plays, all the Sierra games and all the Miss games. And then he got married, and now his wife once in a while drops in and uh, let's plays together with him. And it's fun to watch. They're they're doing a great job because he's always so very serious and. She's very, she's a very fun person. So I rather like that. Um, let's let's move on. When did you play your very first Sierra game, and which one was it? The first Sierra game I played was King's Quest IV, uh, and it was a pirated copy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And how did you manage the copyright thing? I mean, the, you know, the manual with all the. Uh, uh, the thing is, the thing is, my my dad, uh, he got a. He got the first computer somewhere in about 1986, 1987, and at first he was uh, teaching me all the stuff about DOS and, and, and the old programs back then. But I was more into video games because a couple of years before that I, I got uh, introduced to video games uh, at my cousin's place. So I was all the time asking, I want uh, you know an Atari computer, even though you know it barely even existed anymore in, in the late 80s. But what did I know as a as a little kid right? but then one day uh, he came back from work with a stack of floppies with king's quest 4 and a copied manual now in the meanwhile i i did make up for that <laughs> you okay. know I all the original several copies of uh, a whole bunch of Sierra games um but back then you know when you're you know, uh, like 12 years old or so i was just happy to have a game right and um so yeah king's quest 4 was the first one i played didn't have I didn't have a sound card or anything. I didn't even have a color monitor or anything. It was monitor on screen. Uh, but I was wow. playing that thing over and over and over again. So, and, and that that's what introduced me to Sierra. Uh, and then, well, later in, in in when I went to high school, then with other students, we also started exchanging games. You know, that's how it went back then when the kids just exchange what you got and and so forth. But the real collecting. Uh, where I finally made up for, for all the piracy I was doing in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Um, then, then I started really purchasing uh, all the games. Um, and then at the time they had also the Sierra Originals, because if you bought the... the it was often $40, uh, $40 $50, or well, then yeah. it was not, no euros yet, uh, so it was Belgian francs. Uh, but anyway, they, they, Sierra had then also the Sierra Originals budget releases, and those were the first things I was buying. And then also the 1994 King's Quest collection, because I had played King's Quest 4 so many times, I wanted to see what the others were like. Uh -huh. And from there, it kind of escalated, I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how many times did you play King's Quest 4? Do you remember 10, 20, 100 times? I'm just... Ooh, um, well, when, whenever I put a game on, on the site itself, I play it through four, five, six times. So first, first, like the, in order to first get into the game, to get the full score, to write the walkthrough, then I need to take the screenshots, the yeah. video recordings, the music recordings, and so forth. Uh, so often when I put something on the site, uh, it takes me four, five, or even six times to play through it uh, before everything is actually on the site. All the different aspects of the game. But yes, that's a lot. That's a lot of work. I know because when when I did my let's plays, I uh, I never did blind let's plays. I hated that because uh, uh, I would probably have been a mess and taken I don't know two thousand. Uh, 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 takes for a one hour video or so, I don't know. And uh, I was always prepared and everything. And that's a lot of work. And I went through the games I played at least three, four times as well. So I know you put a lot of time into it, don't you? And Julian's going to come up with the next question because we haven't heard anything from him yet. <laughs> we are on the third one, am I right? Fourth. Fourth one, okay. Yeah. Okay, so Rudy, um, next question is, uh, what's your favorite genre and what's your favorite game? 
your in that song. Ever favorite. <laughs> yeah. Um, I probably have favorite games within each genre because um, most of the followers of the series just, I think, are adventure game fans. Now I love adventure games. Yeah. Uh, but I also love strategy games, and I even like uh, first-person shooters and uh, sports games a little bit less. Uh, but if you'd ask me for which is my favorite game within each genre, uh, let's say for adventure games, um, I absolutely adore uh, Gabriel Knight 2, The Beast Within. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been playing that one, well, I don't know how many times, uh, 30 times, 40 times, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't really count it, but a okay. lot. <laughs> um, but also other games like... Uh, when you go through the King's Quest series, most people say, oh, okay, King's Quest 6. I really like King's Quest 6, but for me, King's Quest 4 is a little bit more special because it was the the first one I played. And I've been playing that one probably even more than Gabriel Knight 2. Um, um, yeah, when... King's Quest 6 was fabulous. That was really great. Uh, my, my first King's Quest was actually King's Quest 7. So, <laughs> well... Well, of course, you're younger than we are. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Of course. So, yeah. so what do you think of uh, King's Quest Seven? Is it your favorite, or would you prefer? Do you think this other um, King's Quest? Uh, yeah, King's Quest Seven is pretty great, but I played uh, all of the King's Quest um, games and uh, all of the remakes. Um, and I would say, yeah, King's Quest 7 is pretty great, but I also like uh, King's Quest 4 and King's Quest 6. Uh, 7, 6 and 4, these are my favorites. Mm -hmm. so, well, everybody has uh, you know, uh, their, their favorites, of course, for different reasons. Uh, so some people uh, uh, also enjoy my Mask of Eternity. Say, <laughs> That's not really a King's Quest game. No, not at all. <laughs> oh no, I, I I try to beat it, but um, the game <laughs> the game crashes when I enter the final dungeon, so I never I I never able to finish it. Uh, I I buy this game from GOG.com, uh, but even on this side, I I'm not able to get in the final dungeon, so the game crashes and uh, yeah, I never finished it. Oh. Which okay. is too bad, otherwise we would have made a very, very funny Let's Play stream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I once bought a, I once bought a CD, for a, a, a King's Quest Eight CD, ages ago, and I was really eager to play it, and I got it installed, and I got it running somehow on a very old machine, it was ages ago, and then it crashed on the first saving save state. And I never played it again, and I never, I never even really started with it. So I uh, gave it away to somebody else some years ago, and I think he, he never even started the game. <laughs> <laughs> or got it started. I don't know. It was a very old CD, and I don't even know if there wasn't, if it wasn't okay, if it was okay. I have no idea. Well, that's so much for King's Quest Eight. It's definitely not our favorite, is it? No. no it's... Although I do, I do enjoy playing it, but I wouldn't say it's in the. Um, there's there, while there are references to to King's Quest, it's a little bit too different to be considered part of uh, the traditional King's Quest uh, uh, series, in, in my opinion. Even though it was uh, designed by by Roberta, but there was also a lot of delays going on when they made that, and a lot of influence, outside influence on. Uh, on the final product, because mm. um, originally it was planned to be completely different from what I understand. Uh, but that was also in a time, of course, with uh, CUC and, and the Davidsons, um, and who uh, reportedly um, put quite some pressure and, and made quite some influence on the final products also. So it's, it's not really, even though uh, it was designed by Roberta, um, it's, the final product is not, you know, 100% Roberta. Right, right. That's the way I see it. And uh, it's also, that was a time when all the 3D stuff came up. And I think they just wanted to take a ride on that wave as well. And that's what came out. I was really disappointed. And uh, 
I found it was a shame that they never continued the King's Quest series in the old style, like they did in, in, in 5 and 6. Yeah. And also 7. I loved 7, although many said, oh, that's too Disney and stuff. But I liked the story and I liked the puzzles and it was so much fun to play. And it's one of my favorite King's Quest as well. Mm -hmm. Beside 4 and 6, yeah. And the remakes, the two uh, VGA remake and the three Redux is great. They are just great games. So. Yeah, King's Quest uh, three Redux is, yeah, my my, my favorite uh, VGA. Mine is two, I think. Well, uh, uh, to be honest, I haven't played the third one yet, uh, but I believe there's two, two different uh, versions of it. One is by yeah. AGT, uh, Interactive, the other is by uh, 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 Infamous Quest, right? Um, uh, infamous, uh, infamous Adventures. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. I still have to get to those. I did play the uh, the first uh, two by AGDR um, and and put them also on the site because I also put um, uh, fan fan games on it. So fanity makes and such. Uh, I also everything related to yeah, just I just put on the site. I particularly like the. Uh, of, of those remakes, I particularly, I particularly like the uh, VGA remake of King's Quest 2. Yeah. Yes, that was um, fantastic. Because, uh, not only because of the better graphics and everything, but uh, the way the story was altered versus the original. Normally you'd say like, okay, you know, you have to stick to the original, but I really liked how they changed the story in such yeah. a way that it actually became much deeper. Mm. Yeah, uh, uh, here, yeah, uh, for... Became much deeper and, and all got connected somehow, and uh, I really enjoyed that about that. Also, the puzzles were uh, differently made, and even the characters, so like the original bad characters from the original things with AGI, uh, actually became good characters in uh, like uh, Count Draco, which is uh, voiced by, um, by Cedric, actually. Uh, yeah, yeah, by, I want... Richard Ironson, he's, he's the one doing the voice of Count Draco. Uh, yeah. Also means, which also makes it a little special, is that uh, Josh Mandel as King Graham and um, Richard Ireson uh, both collaborate again um, in in a King's Quest game. Although um, uh, Richard obviously not as um, as Cedric, but more prominently uh, as as Count Draco. Although he also does appear as Cedric in a little Easter egg there, which um, which is kind of funny. I'm not sure if you've seen that one. Have you um, seen the appearance of uh, Cedric in uh, King's Quest 2 VGA? Um, I, I don't know, but uh, I only see uh, we only seen Cedric in King's Quest 3 VGA. Uh, when you walk um, down to Daventry to save Rosella, um, Cedric uh, is on a tree, and when you uh, with with um, his uh, west and and stuff, and when you try to talk to him. The announcer says, of course, he cannot talk. He's <laughs> an old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's an old. And that's so funny. That's the Redux version. It is really, it's great. It's difficult as hell, but the original is difficult as hell, too. So it doesn't really matter. Um, Julian, just one question. Why do we have the uh, Teuflisch Gut on both channels for all this time? Um, so I... Um... This is our main screen, and if you if you want to show anything, uh, talk to me. Then I um, I I switch uh, to another scene and um, play a video. So yes, uh, I would well, leave it at that for now because uh, yeah, we get we get into the video when we started uh, talking about the anniversary anniversary video. So. Yeah. Um, I would love to know how many Sierra games you own. Uh, currently, um, somewhere around 400, I think. Oh my God. I, I didn't really keep it uh, no, count. So, Do you have uh, room for anything else <laughs> in your apartment or house? I need a new closet for it. <laughs> 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 I need more storage. I need more. 400. And that's just Sierra. Do you own any other video games as well? Um, yeah, but not many. Uh, I have a few Command and Conquer things. I have a few things from Blizzard, uh, like Warcraft and so on. Okay. Um, but all in all, I think I have maybe, what, 20? 
titles from that are non Sierra and, and all the rest is just uh, the Sierra. Okay, I, just, um... yeah, I still have to play through actually. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot to play through. Okay, I, I, I have another question. I um, uh, so Rudy, did you ever played a Space Quest game? And what's of your uh, uh, oh, feeling please. about the Space Quest games? So I I really liked uh, one, two, and three, but four and five, uh, we we we, we Malin and I we we tried to play five and um, yeah. <laughs> And we um, stopped playing it, and and four was terrible. So I I, I don't know what happened uh, after three, oh, but um... oh my god, <laughs> you don't like Space Quest Four? No, because it's I don't know why it's it's I I, I can't even remember the story. We, uh, we, 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 we I don't remember it either. Yeah, we 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 played it two months ago. Or oh, longer, that, yeah, four or five months or so. I don't know. I don't. I don't even remember it. If you want to <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> uh, no, actually, here's a, a little thing. I, I recorded all the, the the space quests and did all the walkthroughs and all that. Mm. Uh, but the, the the first one I did was Space Quest Three. Uh, on for the site, mm. uh, that that was you know, like when the site started in two thousand and. Nine, I think, somewhere. So in the first, during the first year, I did that one, and I actually contacted Scott Murphy, and I said, like, okay, you know, I'm going to put in a space quest. But each one is your favorite. And Scott actually said that his favorite is Space Quest Three, hmm. which is also why uh, why I started off with that one, you know, to show, you know, uh, and then when I finished, just I said, like, okay, Scott, check it out. What do you think? And, um, and, um, but yeah, most people think Space Quest Four. Uh, is is the the best space quest um some people really like space quest 6 even though um that's without the, the involvement of uh, mark row in space quest 5 is mark row because then by that time he had moved to dynamics and it's mostly a dynamics team that built space quest 5. um so space quest 5 definitely different than than the previous titles but also space quest 6. i enjoy them all really uh My personal favorite, um, although it's been a long time since I played it, uh, would probably also be Space Quest uh, 3. Yeah, mine, I like, mine I too. I like how it moves from one planet to another planet, um, and basically, not just for the visuals, but also the, the, the action sequences and so forth. Yeah. And when he um, uh, rescues the, the Andromedans and then he you know, lands at the Ochre studio in the end. Yeah. Uh, the only Space Quest I ever played, but not Let's Played, was Space Quest 6. And that's ages ago, must have been, I don't know, before the times of the internet. <laughs> and I have no idea. And I thought it was, or when the internet just started, and I thought it was pretty difficult, but I had a lot of fun playing it, except for this arcade scene right in the beginning. Uh, that was horrible. I hate arcades. <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah. Uh, how many uh, Sierra games have you recorded for your site so far? Uh, so far, I'm um, completed. Com like yeah. Fully completed would be around uh, 120 something. <sighs> Um, but there's many more. I mean, um, there's, there's over 700 titles on the site. Now, uh, from yeah. those 700 titles, you have to know that it also includes all the Sierra titles uh, released uh, when Sierra was in hands of Vivendi. I know. The, 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 um, the indie games, are you know, Fan of Emacs and such. Uh, and also very important is that all the collections are in there. So... It, For example, you have the King's Quest collections, various collections, the, the, the 15th anniversary collection, you have the, uh, the, the the collection released in 97, then you have the XP collections that were released in, when was it, 2006, and all those count as titles, right? So if you look right. at just purely the individual game titles, uh, then, then it's uh, around 400 titles. So, so I'm about... 
one third of of uh, completion of the whole site. So we still need about two decades or so to finish it up. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say. So it will take you probably another twenty years to finish them all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you also have the cocktail games in your? Uh... Yeah, the, the, also those are all in. So uh, the Cocktail Vision and Dynamics yeah. and Bright Star Studios and Impressions and then all the other developers that came afterwards, right? The in, in, uh, independent developers. Because uh, when, when Sierra was acquired eventually by Vivendi, they just outsourced mm -hmm. all the development to other studios. So all those things are also on the site or, you know, but still have to be completed, still have to make recordings and do the walkthroughs and all that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, all that uh, will eventually, like I said, in 20 years or so, um, should finally, hopefully, be completed. I'm, I'm not going to stop anytime soon, that's for sure. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> You've got to go on. And let let me know, what did, what made you start uh, with Sierra Chest? What was your ambition to do that? Well, actually, I wanted to, because it started in 2008, um, but already before that, before that, I was also a moderator at the official Sierra forums. Um, and already at that time, I was uh, compiling databases with all the titles and making screenshots and all that. But I didn't know how to build a website. Yeah. Uh, so, so I just had this, this on my hard drive, this database with a bunch of stuff. Uh, but then in 2008, when uh, there was the announcement that Activision would acquire uh, Vivendi Games and that the Sierra name would be discontinued, uh, that's that's when I said like, okay, you know, now I just have to do something about it. I didn't want the, I didn't want to the, uh, the community to fall apart. There were several others also doing, uh, starting up their websites, uh, and I thought it was time for for me to to actually build uh, a site myself too, but. Um, the other people, uh, for example, there's SierraHelp.com, very good website for technical. I know. Support. So, yeah, uh, and that was, was focused on mostly on technical support of that. Then there's uh, LarryLaffer.net, which is focused on religious with Larry, and there were oh. several more sites. <laughs> on there. Uh, yeah. But there was no website covering everything. Yeah. So they're like, okay, well, I'm gonna build a website that covers everything. And then, they, and then they said, you're nuts. He's like, yeah, okay, sure. I threw it anyway. <laughs> um, and, and they uh, were right, I think. But that's, it was still a great idea because it's so unique and you can't find it anywhere else. So great job. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's still, still working on it. But uh, yeah, just moving on. Uh, still, it's all up there. There is even a new Leisure Suit Larry game coming up this month, I think. Mm, yeah, they just announced that um, Jan Rapson, the, the voice actor uh, of Legion Suit Larry, um, will be doing uh, the voice of Larry. Apparently, uh, prior to that, they had uh, an, uh, somebody else in mind to do the voice, but uh, I, I highly commend them for, for picking Jan Rapson. It brings the, the game to... I mean, uh, when you play Legion Suit Larry, you automatically think, okay, Larry is Jan Rapson. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, definitely a good move to um, to have Jan on, on board to do the voicing. Yeah. That should definitely improve um, not just the the game, but also the um, the sales for them. Uh, I hope they do successful. Um, I've seen a few clips of it. I'm not really sure what to think of it yet, but I'll definitely try it out once uh, once it's released. Oh, you have to. I mean, if anybody, you have to. <laughs> Well, I haven't played, um, what's it called again, the, the, the last disaster of uh, Legion Suit Larry by, um, um, oh yeah, Box Office Bust. I haven't tried that one, and I probably never will. No, I, uh, I only played uh, one, uh, yes, the first one, uh, then two and three, which I really loved. They were both great. And then we uh, let's played five on a friend's channel years ago, and <laughs> he he uh, that was with Shine Spark and Anna and Shine Spark had never ever before played a point and click adventure, leave alone Larry Leffer, and so I had to guide him through the whole thing, and we had so much fun. <laughs> I think there was a, was a German version. I don't even remember it. It's been a long time ago, and we had a lot of fun, and I just loved Larry Free was hilarious. 
Well, originally, uh, Legion Suit Larry was supposed to be a trilogy. It was um, the idea was that after three uh, after three games, the, the whole series would be closed. I know it, that's it, why Ello said the there will never be a, a Legion Suit Larry four, and that's why they came up with uh, Larry five and the case of the lost floppies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. Actually, there's also other theories uh, regarding Legion Suit Larry 4. Um, and that is that at the time they had, uh, they were also starting up uh, with the uh, uh, PSN, the Sierra Network, and they were, were trying, so I heard, uh, some kind of online version of, of uh, Legion Suit Larry. Okay. Uh, which didn't quite pan out. Uh, and then at that point they said like, okay, we skipped the whole four thing and went straight to uh, Leisure Suit Larry Five. Right. Uh, and they said, okay, what are you gonna say about Larry Four? And then Al usually says, "My dog ate a flop," is or something like that, right? Yeah, it was. It uh, was. Even, it was supposed, it to, be, was supposed to be some some something in between there, with the, which apparently didn't pan out. Or, but I think we'll never find out exactly uh, what happened there. No, but uh, the the case of the lost floppies was mentioned in Larry Five. Somebody says some of the uh, characters say it. I just don't remember who. It's been a long time ago, and I thought it was really funny. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Julian's up with the next question. Okay, okay. So I have to look where, which one he at. One, two, the three, registration four, stuff. Five, six. Uh, why, why, yeah. Wait a sec, Hello? my my screen is frozen. Oh. Um, on which one are we? The registration. Registration. I don't know, my PC is... Oh no. Oh, okay, no, it's, it, it's, it's, it's fine. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, oh, oh, the last one. No, the registration. Yeah, why is the regis re registration currently disabled? On Sierra on Chess, yeah, because I tried to uh, I tried to register and couldn't. Why? Yeah, it is still disabled, yeah. Um, well, uh, I updated the, the site. It originally was a, another person doing the programming. Like I said, I didn't know how to build a website. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, when was it? Two years ago, I upgraded it uh, to Sierra Chest version 2, Legacy of the Half Dome, the one which is now, uh, as it is right now. Uh, but I also wanted to add a whole bunch of membership features. Uh, and well, since I learned some some uh, some programming, website programming, because the upgrade, I, I did all that, mm -hmm. uh, the upgrade version. Um, but I can't. I got kind of uh, at one point stuck, for lack of a better word, uh, or I just felt like okay, I've done enough programming, and I just wanted to add more titles to it. The thing is that um, that's still under construction. Okay. Um, so that there there are already forums, for example, and mm. it's already possible for people. Uh, well, if, if you you can go online, but I disabled it for now. But it's actually already there on the site. Yeah, okay. Um, that people can also build their own collections from, because there's a whole bunch of box art and, and so forth. Oh, that's uh, nice. And people can just uh, select which boxes they have, and they can just make a whole list of what they have. They can make lists of which games they're looking for. They can, uh, but then I still have to program. Um, People writing reviews. If people want to write reviews, if people want to, um, uh, another thing that's in there is people can vote on which game entry they would like to see next on the website. Uh huh. Uh, there's a whole bunch of, of community features in there, but they're not finalized yet. So, okay. which is why I disabled the uh, the registration. A few people do have access. A few people have been testing it already, uh, and pointed out some bugs here and there. Uh, mm -hmm. But I just have to finalize the coding of um, of all the membership features, and then hopefully soon. Uh, I can't say exactly when. I just have to get the. I kind of have to get the courage to to get back into that coding. It's like I said, um, I'm pretty new at all this coding, so every time I program something, I have to research it and test it and mm -hmm. try it again. So 
uh, whenever I get to the coding part, it's, it's uh, uh, usually I'm busy with it then for, for a few months to get everything right. I, I just have to get that uh, mental push to continue with that, <laughs> uh, to finalize it really, and then I, yeah. I can launch it all. Yeah, procrastination. <laughs> we we know what. Uh, yeah, I know what it is. I know what you mean. And uh, uh, get something finished. I've been working on the um, translation for King's Quest Three Redux now for a few months, and uh, I got so not fed up with it, but tired and behind. So I just, oh, I want to finish. I want to finish, but not today. <laughs> so, exactly. You know. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Uh, yeah, like, I, I, pardon? Yeah, it, it's similarly my case. You know, it's like okay, you know, I could really program. Let's say, for example, I could, the, the part where where members can add uh, screenshots or where the people can add box art or whatever. Yes, like, of course. Yeah, but actually, I feel more like playing and recording a game and just adding Ooh. a little bit more content first, and I'll do the other thing next week, right? I'll yeah. do the programming yeah. next or next month. <laughs> Yes, of our delay, next year. Delay, delay, all the time. <laughs> but, but essentially, um, there's not that much left <laughs> to, to finalize those community features. Uh, I think if I would really go on it focused full time, I could probably finalize it in like two months or so. I just have to, you know, set my mind to it, really. Yeah, push yourself a little bit and then you get going. And as I understand, you learned how to program now and all that. Are there any other people involved uh, helping you with programming and databasing and all that stuff? Um, originally, there was a friend of mine who did the, the original side design, mm -hmm. uh, Boyan Arach. Uh, you can also see him in the side credits. Uh, and uh, also... Um, Britton Matthews. Uh, Britton, he's, he's the one who really said, like, okay, dude, start, start learning coding so you can make the updates yourself. Um, and he referred <laughs> me to, to several online lessons and so forth. And then I also started going into the coding myself and just trial and error. Uh, and um, Britton also assisted uh, with some of the later upgrades. Um, but he was really the guy pushing me to, uh, to start to also code myself right mm -hmm. uh, and uh, i'm really grateful for uh, to britain for that and also for all the help he's given me over the years but um now lately uh, as to who's working on the side it's, it's just me at this far uh, in the last couple of years just uh, all the content all the programming all the all the recordings it's it's just me yeah yeah that's quite amazing i think because uh I I started uh, learning it years ago, and then I was too lazy to ever complete it, and so I wouldn't be able to do it. But Julian can do it, I think. Uh, mm. Mm. Well, no, not so much. <laughs> oh, come on. You can ask the next question, though. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. So... I think we are at the Who of the Sierra slabs, no? Uh, the last one of the Sierra. Yeah. Chest. Yes. Um, yeah. Who of the Sierra slabs have you met in person and where, when, and how? Yes. Um, I haven't really met many people from Sierra because I'm here in Slovenia. And most people of here are in the United States. Uh, now, I'd love to go to the United States once, and then um, I would do a tour then, uh, Oakhurst area, and Seattle area. There's still many people mm. there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in touch mostly through social media. The only um, people I did meet are uh, Ken and Roberta Williams, uh, because they're, they're, they're doing these tours with their, with their ship. And in, when was it, five years ago, uh, they were going, at the time I was also the admin of Sierra Gamers, so the, the website of, uh, of Kenneth Roberta Williams. Mm. Uh, wow. So I was uh, from time to time, I, I still am from time to time in contact uh, with Ken. Uh, not too often, but you know, occasionally. But back then, um, in 2013, he, was, he and Roberta was, uh, were traveling from Turkey with their, with their ship all, uh, all the way to northern Croatia 
and I said like, okay, well, I live in Slovenia, which is just above Croatia. Yeah. You know, would yeah. be great to meet up. And uh, he said like, yeah, sure, come on over. And uh, I went then one day uh, together with my wife, drove to Croatia and uh, went on the ship, spent uh, the, the whole morning uh, with them and eventually even drove them to town in, in my car, which is really funny. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, was there, this, uh, there was this uh, marina right outside the town. There was a town called Pula in, in Croatia. And um, they said, like, okay, you know, we'd like to see the town a little bit. Uh, but it's, you know, the town was far away from, from where they were, you know, where the harbor was. Um, and I said, like, okay, well, I can just drive you there if you want. And it's like, Okay, no problem. So they always with this tiny little Volkswagen Polo. <laughs> I had one. And then, yeah, I was yeah, I was doing a drive with Cam Williams next Williams next to me, and then Roberta and my wife on the back seat. Uh, and Roberta also had their 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 two Chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a really really a hot day. Oh, gosh. Uh, and then we got stuck in, in and then we got stuck in traffic. Which is... <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that was it. Was really fun. Well, something to to tell, you know, some story to tell, sort of. I yeah, guess. that's that's great. And how did yeah. you get them all to the camera for your 10th anniversary video? I think that was amazing. There were so many people, and even Lo. Did you know I once made a birthday video for Lo? That must have been 10 years ago or so, nine years. I, I don't know. That one, yeah, yeah. Well, you changed the lyrics of uh, 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 it was it was it the Freddie Farkas song? Maybe? Yeah, it was a Freddie Farkas song, and I sang yeah. it with Densming and uh, WC10K and another guy. I don't remember the name. Fuzzy monkey something with a number I don't remember, and we had so much fun. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's for uh, for his 60th birthday. I think that was wasn't it? 63rd or something. I don't know. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. yeah no, no, I remember that. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It was so how, how did you get them to to uh, uh, to say something for your anniversary video? I found that amazing. Um. Did you write or did you? Yeah, uh, like I said, occasionally I'm, I'm still in touch, mostly with Ken, not, not so much with, with Roberta, but um, um, so yeah, I just uh, straight up asked him, like I asked all, with, so all the, the other guests uh, on the show, uh, and Roberta needed a little bit of convincing, uh, but yeah, I was very, very happy to see she also joined that, that was really great, um, as well as all the other guests, I mean, uh, we had uh, you know, Allo and Josh Mandel and then yeah. uh, people from Dynamics and artists and programmers and composers and, and also the fans. I was really happy with the turnout because originally I wanted to do an AMA. It was like, you know, people would uh, fire a few questions about the site. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of like this, this podcast right now. Uh, and I'd just be answering to it. And um, But then there were so many people um, that sent in videos. Uh, well, I did send many, many invitations also, and then I started figuring out that the whole show would take more than three hours if, if I would also be, be talking in between. So yeah, I mean, the, yeah, uh, that's what you wrote in the group. Yes, I remember. <laughs> yeah, said, I'm just going to skip the AMA. If people have questions, just go to Facebook and ask me. I'll answer there. And I'm just going to you know, line up all the guests and I make individual clips out of it, a little bit of music on it and so forth. Yeah. It was and a good idea. It to be, uh, you know, a, a one hour 40 uh, video of, of just all the, the people there. And I'm, I'm really happy how it uh, worked out. And it seems like uh, the community really enjoys it. So I'm really happy about it. Yeah, we I did too. And let's let's go into your video. Um, like maybe right to the beginning, because you start with a game which I also let's played, and I have something to tell you about that. Yeah, let me, uh, I I just uh, show Ken and Roberta here, because yeah, we, we, talk, we, we, we talk about them. Um, well, the dogs, yes. Yeah, um, well, skip to the beginning of the video, you say? Yeah. Uh, maybe 590 here? Yeah, about, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, 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 there, there. There it was, or there, it doesn't matter. 
This this one uh, with the bit two earlier, bit earlier. Bit earlier, okay. Yeah. Oh, where this. The woman in the, where yeah. Where Sadie and 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 Fred are in bed together. <laughs> ah, this one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and um, there is this guy Densming who made a lot of uh, uh, tutorial videos of how to program an uh, adventure game with the uh, what was it? Adventure Game Studio, AGS. And he also made the best ever Let's Play of Freddy Farkas Frontier Pharmacist. He did all the voice acting alone. And uh, he did Madame Sadie. And I said, hey, listen, I do a better Madame Sadie than you. So just <laughs> let's try that. And we did that scene together <laughs> and had so much fun. <laughs> it was really amazing. I also was Penelope Prim, I guess. And then I let's played it in German, but the German versions of these old games, of these old Sierra games, just like the Robin Hood thing, Conquest of the Longbow, and also Freddy Farkas, and also King's Quest VI, which exists in German. I didn't even know that. So uh, they're all kind of, well, let's call it funny, uh, creepy, terrible, but still, I mean, you can have a lot of fun. And I loved to be Madame Sadie. You know, she's my kind of girl somehow, Beautiful. and my voice fits her perfectly. So, yes, that was great. I loved, and I loved the game, although it was difficult. I don't know how many times I died. How many times did you die, Rudy, when you played it first, Freddy when Farkas? I first played Freddy, Freddy Farkas. I was always ran out of time with the with the horse flat ones. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> And when we let's played it, I had, I had, uh, I don't know how many times I had played it before, uh, just to practice the scene. And then I finally made it, and I made a save state of, you know, when I had it all, and I used that in our let's play because I said, well, uh, that's it now. <laughs> I'm tired. I died. I don't know three or four times, and my co-players were like. <laughs> so I said, well, we'll uh, switch to the safe state and go on from there. It was quite difficult, but I still liked it. <laughs> and I wonder what happened to Penelope Prim. She never showed up in any other game either. Too bad. Well, I think uh, the, there was uh, intended to be a, a sequel for, yes. uh, for Freddy Farkas. They surely point towards it uh, near the end of the game. But yeah. uh, that's another thing, uh, which I'm, uh, which is rather sad, actually. Also, with uh, Torin's Passage, another L game. Oh, I yeah. love Torin's Passage. Uh, yeah, that was too. originally supposed to be a series of, of, of five games, uh, which is, you know, I'd, I'd love to see that. Also, uh, you know, what would have uh, with L at the helmet, of course, but what would have happened in in those following games, right? It's, it's yeah. uh, it was done a series that as, as uh, Thorin becomes king and then he ages and so forth. Pretty much like uh, King's Quest. Uh, yeah, like the latest King's Quest by, by the old gentleman. Yeah. Uh, where you have five games where, where Thorin becomes king and then, you know, and in the end he also passes away. Um, yeah. But, you know, we have to, you know, unfortunately just get to, to one title there. Yeah, that's too bad because we wanted, uh, we always wanted to go to Crystal City and we wanted to revisit, uh, what was her name, Lena or Lisa, the princess, uh, Lena. Lena, and all that. And we just, you know, were really. Uh, and the game was, the, the game was a little bit too short. Uh, I mean, when you entered, uh, I don't know the name, of, uh, but but when you enter the third world. Um, with a, uh, the green one uh, where you have to... Yeah, um, very clean, actually. Very rescue surf from those uh, little guys, whatever they call them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah th right. This world is so short. You, have, uh, you only have to do one or two um, puzzles and then the world is finished. Yeah, but that was exceptional. I think the other worlds were uh, a little bit more extensive. Yes, also. they were. Especially the one in, uh, what was it, Escarpa, the second one? with King whatever, Arthur and Scarpa, yeah. Queen Diana. Uh, that was long and it was a lot of running around and a lot of getting stuff and carrying it elsewhere and exchanging things. And you give me that and I'll let you have that. The typical adventure stuff, I loved it. 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, but um, I regret it very much that there was uh, no sequel to it. Yeah, I liked this game. Yeah, Torrent was great. Well, it was rather different than than Leisure Suit Larry, of course. It's different, uh, just although there was you could clearly see uh, else. Say, uh, humor there and stamp with clearly on it, but the, the, the okay. genre overall is, is, is quite different than the than, than usual Larry Portrait. Yeah, it was, it was a great game there. for kids. The music was awesome in uh, Torrent's Passage. Yeah. yeah. And that, oh, the, there exists a German version as well of Torrent's Passage. And of course, so many of the jokes could not be translated, but were translated, and it was horrible. You remember the the one with the Chuck Berries when uh, when Torin asked Google, "Hey, can you be an axe?" and he does a Chuck Berry song, and yeah, uh, yeah. the guy goes, "Hey, what?" what, what and and Torin asks the guy, "Hey, what berries were that?" and he says, "Hey, Chuck Berries, of course." Mm -hmm, and yeah. you can't translate that, and they did such a bad job on that. Uh, well, you know, German versions. <laughs> we can do another talk about German versions of. Sierra games or <laughs> any game another day, not oh, today. Gabriel Knight two translation. <laughs> Track Gabriel Knight uh, one. I don't know if there was a German translation. If if so, I never had it. But Gabriel Knight two was translated into German, and well, now well, this have, yeah, this didn't make any sense at all because in the German uh, version, Gabriel spoke perfect German, and the Germans spoke German as well. And uh, Gabriel still needed help for translating. <laughs> and that was so ridiculous. <laughs> and also Grace. Uh, it, it just didn't work in German. It just worked when, when from... it was English and German, but not German only. I mean, it was so ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah. supposedly uh, for the German version of Gabriel Knight 2, they, they made uh, Gabriel Knight and Grace speak uh, normal standard German where they did with the where they went around it by letting all the other actors speak in like a heavy local accent or something at least that's what I've read I haven't played the German version of Gabriel Knight 2 yet but isn't it so that the German actors uh, you know German players in the in, in, in the game are uh, they uh, using a heavy accent or are they also just using they regular? also use this heavy accent uh, the Bavarian uh, supposedly Bavarian accent in the English version uh, some of them like this, uh, this uh, police guy, this fat, fat guy uh, who nearly shoots Gabriel Knight at the end. But I don't really remember. It's been so long that I've played it. And I, it's been longer, even longer probably than that I watched the German Let's Play. I would have to dive into it again. I'm sorry, I don't remember. I just thought it was ridiculous and it didn't work. And the Bavarian accents were it. I think they were just uh, the most ridiculous part of it, even in the English version, because it was fake Bavarian. <laughs> but it was funny, and I liked the story. I loved the story with the uh, King, whatever, Ludwig der Zweite, and the opera, the Wagner opera, and that was just great. Well, I'm an opera freak anyway, so I just love that. <laughs> and I like the uh, I like Gabriel Knight one, but I didn't really like three. What do you think about uh, uh, Gabriel Knight three, Rudy? Uh, I like it, although it took uh, quite a while to get a full score on it, and I did yeah. have to do the walkthrough here and there uh, to, to to get the full score. Uh... Especially in certain parts where you have to be really quick in order to, to do certain actions within a certain time limit and so forth. Uh huh. Um, Story-wise, um, well, it's um, well, it's interesting. I, I always wonder how Jane keeps uh, Jane Jensen, how she keeps finding these these stories and then manages because she's a great storyteller. Yes. Uh, she manages to to blend these these uh, historical facts and then combine them with with the uh, with fiction, and then makes uh, a really strong story. And she did the same thing with with, uh, with Gabriel Knight three, uh, but it's by far the most difficult Gabriel Knight in, in my opinion. But uh, nonetheless, uh, quite enjoyable. But I did need a walkthrough uh, to get through it. Yeah, I I believe that. 
And it was uh, it was uh, the 3D animation wasn't too good, I think. Well, they had some experience uh, because before that they had uh, the Mask of Eternity, right? Uh, and so they managed to, to clean up the engine a bit and get some of those glitches out. But there was still a lot of, of clipping of body parts here and, and yeah. this yeah. forth. Uh, but um, yeah, for me, that's I, I prefer to just focus on uh, not, not so much on on the graphics. Uh, but for the time, okay, the graphics were okay. This 3D thing is quite kind of new, and so you know, they had to. Uh, it, it, it was still evolving, right? Um, right. I prefer to focus on on, on the story, and uh, I think the story once again was uh, really great. So, so yeah, I do like it. Uh, Get on my three. I never played it. I just watched some let's plays in English. I don't even know if there was a German version. No idea. I li I prefer the originals anyway. But uh, it's a German version with a completely different box art. And that, that's what I done. Um, which is kind of weird, actually. You look at the, the box art of the German version of Gabriel Knight 3, alternative box art. Have you, have you seen that one? No, I haven't. It's uh, Gabriel and Grace in a cave or something, um, and with with the hand of a skeleton coming out of the ground. But you say, what? It's like, which scene in the game is this? Right? It's, it's like they tried to make a really spectacular uh, front cover, but it doesn't even occur in the game. Where does this come from? Uh, yeah, I see it. I, I, I just, uh, jeez, goodness. Okay, okay, I know what you're talking about. Thank you for pointing this out. That's horrible. Yeah. Ooh. You've never seen that uh, box art before, the German box art? Of, uh, no. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, there you have it. Yeah, I just found it. It was, uh, yeah, well, no, I don't, I don't like. It looks like Indiana Jones or something. Yeah, you know, it's um, yeah, it's, it's not something you find anywhere in the game. You really have to wonder, like, okay, which part of the game does this, this occur in? And and what's that a bug in front of them or ah, Jesus? Okay, <laughs> uh, so uh, that's the same with the uh, German uh, titles from. Uh, uh, translated from English sometimes so awful also in movies but anyway uh, we I would like to also talk a bit about Phantasmagoria Julian would love to talk about it I guess um, yeah um, someone uh, actually write, uh, wrote in the chat uh, um, but we missed it it's like uh, yeah 30 minutes ago Susie's oh. Bastel Kanal Oh, uh, she also uh, she she only writes hmm, yeah question mark. But um, yeah, uh, greetings to you, Susie. Yeah, hello, Sumi. Bist du noch da? Wird mich ja freuen. Okay, that's uh, that's the girl who uh, let's play um, Freddy Farkas and Monkey Island one and two with me. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so Phantasmagoria. Uh -huh. Yeah, Phantasmagoria is a cool game, I think, <laughs> and I really want, uh, I really want to play this game again with Marlene uh, in the Halloween season. We will soon. Yeah, very, we will very soon. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I really like the game. It's it's funny uh, because uh, um, what was her name again? Adrian in her orange sweatshirt. Adrian and her orange sweatshirt. Uh, that uh, she never changes. It's pretty yeah. nice. Everybody was it. Did you like one or two more, Rudy? Um, I like the first one generally more. The 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 the, the, the tension that the, how it was built up in yeah. the second one. Uh, well, there's more, in my opinion, there's more gore, extreme gore in, in the second one. I like them both. I like gory games. Um, which one I prefer? Yeah, probably the probably the first, but I like them both. Yeah, me too. I, I never I never played the second one. Uh, I just already didn't like the beginning. I watched Let's Plays, though. Good Let's Plays. Um, the funniest was by, oh God, Spoonie, well, I don't know. I don't remember the guy's name a long time ago, and that was absolutely hilarious. But 
I love I played one a lot of times and every time I was amazed again and I hated the end and I still love the game it was great uh, what made Roberta switch from something like King's Quest to something like Phantasmagoria do you do you happen to know by any chance Rudy uh, well, from from interviews and such uh, by her, she actually already started working on Phantasmagoria long before it was released. Uh, originally, it was supposed uh, it was called Scary Tales. Okay. Um, and that was, I think, it was first mentioned in around '92. So basically, after she finalized, I think, King's Quest VI with with Jane Jensen. Uh, around that time, she was, there was already mention of of, uh, of a horror game. It was supposed to be a series called Scary Tales. And as a matter of fact, if you look, uh, if you have the CD-ROM of Phantasmagoria, and and you know you install the game, you'll see that the um, the launch icon is still called Scary from from the original name Scary Tales. Now, why she okay. went uh, for for why she switched from King's Quest to Phantasmagoria. Uh, well, Roberta did, did more uh, different genres. Uh, she did far more than just King's Quest, also before Phantasmagoria. I know. Uh, like like uh, the, the, the Commonwealth's Big Quest, and she also did some children ed entertainment, like uh, mixed up uh, Mother Goose, and of course her very first game, Mystery House, is also a murder mystery. Uh, in fact, the uh, uh, Laura Bow one Laura Bo, is, yes, yes, yes. Is, is a remake, a graphical remake of, of the original Mystery House with more story, of course, and better graphics and, and all that. Um, so she's no stranger to horror, and, and from what I understand, she's actually a great, fa a big fan of, of horror stories. Um, so I'm not really surprised that she went for a different genre. You know, if you do the same genre adventure games with with uh with fairy tale creatures and magical lands and so forth after some time i would imagine you'd like to do something different yes of course of course but we were all kind of uh, not really shocked but surprised that after king's quest 7 uh they came out with uh something like phantasmagoria that was woo and when in your video uh Don showed up in real life as he looks today. It freaked me out. I said, that's, that's not possible. I, it was so amazing. I think that was the uh, most amazing part in the whole video, for me at least, you know, mm -hmm. to see that guy appearing and congratulating you after having played this horrible. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, great. Oh, it's, it's still uh, uh, still very much uh, in in and he still fondly remembers uh, Phantasmagoria and he still participates in the fan communities. Also, there's a Phantasmagoria page on on Facebook and uh, which he may no, I don't think so. I think somebody else set it up, but he's, he's definitely present on social media and when when and in various uh, Sierra groups and he loves to talk about uh, uh, about his days back then. Um, about the filming of Phantasmagoria, he really has, I have the impression, very fond memories of that. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's really amazing. I just love that. <laughs> and Phantasmagoria is one of my favorite games in one, not two, one, yes. You mentioned Laura Bow. I thought the first part was extremely difficult. I don't even remember if I ever finished it, but there is one let's play by her Krebiness. Have you ever watched that? Uh, no, I don't think so. No. Uh, well, the sound quality isn't really great, and the let's play is really old. It must have been sitting there for at least 10 years or so, but it is the best, best, best ever of uh, Laura Bow I've seen. She does all the voice acting and she does a great job and she's hilarious and she does really uh, full score and very professionally. And I was so amazed. I watched it all and said, okay, now I will never have to play this game. Great. <laughs> but that, I really recommend it to you because that was so amazing. 
uh, this young woman and doing all the voice acting and great voice acting. Because, because uh, which was my curls voice? Oh yeah, this is my curls voice. Yeah. It was so funny, so I'd recommend it. I'm not much into these uh, uh, mystery games, uh, but I did play through part two of Laura Bow twice, and I never let's played it. Wow. You probably made playthroughs of both, did you? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Did you ever... Yeah, but you probably made playthroughs of Laura Bow 1 and 2, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're... it's all on, on the site already, yes. Most yeah. of the adventure games are, are on the site. There's only a few adventure games I didn't uh, do yet. But yeah, also video plays and, and text walkthroughs and screenshots and music and all that stuff. It's yeah. All... But if you if you have some time, just uh, look into her crabbiness's Laura Bow one that is amazing. Which one did you find more difficult, one or two? Uh, probably the first, uh, because of the, this. Especially if you want to get a perfect score again, you have these. Uh, all the sequences are timed in yeah. and yeah. Kind of request and if you're not on a certain location at a certain time you miss certain vital information that could mean that you just have to start all over again yeah that was terrible that was horrible that it wasn't that it wasn't the case in uh laura bow 2 but there when you went to this exhibition or whatever it was i don't remember in the beginning yeah the live at the museum yeah. yeah at the museum right and you had to listen to like 14 or 16 conversations and then you got the full score. But, yeah. yeah, I had to look it up and walk through. Otherwise, I, you know, I thought, okay, I listened to five now. That's enough, and went on. And then I didn't have full score, and I had to play it again. <laughs> that's, that's one thing I, I did not. Uh, that I liked a little bit less about Laura Bo too. Um, overall, it's a you know great story and and all that. But the thing is, in in the beginning, you have the reception, right? Okay, first first you. Uh, from the moment you arrive at the meeting, then there's the deception, and then you have to uh, basically talk to all characters, over listen to all the characters. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, and in my video walkthrough, uh, well, like you said, you know, in order to get a full score, you you need to over listen to everything, and there's yeah. so yeah. many and talk to everybody. Yeah. Uh, and there's so many things to talk about that in the uh, walkthrough. The first complete half, approximately of the whole video, of the whole game walkthrough, you're just listening and talking to those people at the at that reception there. Yes, yes, um, I hated it. And then in the second half, that's when the murders actually begin and where the real investigation begins. Um, while I overall I, I do like uh, the, the game overall, but I think that part could have been better out, spread out more over the gameplay rather than having it all in, in one location there. Yes. That's just and, and it took so long to listen to all that stuff and and not all of it was important either so I thought oh no. Uh, but anyway, uh, it was a, it was a fun game and I liked it except for that reception. <laughs> you never played them Julian, did you? No. Oh, uh, okay. We won't either. <laughs> we okay. won't do any no please no <laughs> no 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 uh let's get to one of the last ones uh shivers one and two i love those games me yep. too yes i i love them i love them when they first came out uh i let's play shivers one uh, unfortunately not two because uh it doesn't run properly on my machine and I hope maybe one day GOG.com will release a new... Well, they, they released uh, Shivers 1 when was it, uh, about half a year ago. So, yeah, um... Shivers 1 was no problem. I could even play it from my old CD, but uh, they didn't release Shivers 2 yet. Uh, yeah, Shivers 2 also uses a slightly different uh, engine, and they basically they use uh, 3D images. Well, they, they, they're, 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 they're 2D images, but you can then... Um, by moving the mouse around, um, it's kind of like a 360 degree picture. Yeah. Giving you the, the, the impression that you're in a 3D world. Right. Um, but where uh, the original Shivers uses the, um, the, the SEI engine, uh, Shivers 2 is a little bit more 
Um, I think it uses additional newer tools, which apparently can bring some issues to, to get yeah. it to run on, on modern computers. <clears throat> and I really love that game. I love them both, but Shivers 2 was just amazing. The story, this creepy atmosphere, everything. I just loved it. And I wish they came out with it to, for me to play it again. I would once bought a strange version, for, I don't know, at uh, $2 something on the internet. And it has a built-in uh, Windows 3 one uh, on the DOS box, but it still doesn't work as I want it to work. So I guess I have to wait for that. Or you can go to Sierra Help, come and, and ask a collector who's running this site. Over there. Yes, I did, but unfortunately, I think I have the German version, or I don't. I don't even remember which version I have. Uh, I asked at Sierra Help, uh, but um, still no success. Uh, okay. ah, well, then you'll just have to wait for Doc comes up with one, I guess. Yes, exactly. I will. Um, any other game you would like to talk about to uh, at the end of our little conversation? Um, well, let's see. We've been uh, talking about Space Quest. It's, yes, uh, Hero U. Have you played that one? No, but you can tell us a bit about it. Well, I haven't played it yet either. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I did support the um, uh, the Kickstarter. Uh, I just have to didn't get my uh, have the time yet to, to actually uh, get into it. I've been busy with uh, other things and uh, but yeah, uh, from the from other people, other fans, they all have really good feedback uh, about it. Really, you know, Laurie and Corey call very much uh, Quest for Glory style. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was wondering if you had played it because uh, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely be trying it out also soon. Well, I'll watch out for that. And, so so uh, I, <clears throat> I have uh, another question. So it's a, yeah, it's basically not a new question, uh, but um, what are your three favorite Sierra games of all time? Oh dear. Uh oh. <laughs> so please <laughs> tell us. Uh, okay, Gabriel Knight two. Okay. Uh, Keys Quest 4, which was the first one I did, yeah. that I played. Um, oh man, there's so many of them. Uh, does it have to be adventure or...? No, no. Uh, well, Sierra any games, any, any genre, yeah. Um, man, what a question. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going a whole bunch of titles here. Um, from, from, okay, but I'll go for the strategy one, and I'd say Pharaoh by Impressions. I really like that one also. Okay. Okay. But, but I could really say, you know, the many other titles. Uh, this, you know, with regard to strategy, I'd go for, for Pharaoh, with regard to Adventure, East Quest 4, or Gabriel Knight 2. If it comes down to Arcade, I really like Oils well. Um, when it comes to uh those old games i really like the, the uh, original castle of dr Bra uh, the castle of dr brain um so yeah i mean wh which are your favorite three sierra games of all time it's like there's just too many you know yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know which one to, to, main, to name first yeah and and yours julian which are your favorite uh... sierra games Oh, okay, definitely King's Quest 7. Um, Torrin. Torrin, yeah, Torrin's Passage. Uh, and, yeah. The last one. Mm. Mm. I. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. I. It's, I think it's. Um, Half-Life? Ah, Half-Life by Valve, the, the original. Yeah, the original. Mm -hmm. okay. It was, uh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it, it, it was uh, made by Sierra, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, it was developed by Valve, but published by Sierra. The, the, yeah. The original. Yeah, that, uh, I think that counts, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. 
Well, mine's uh, King's Quest Seven as well. Yeah. And then it's Lost in Time by Cocktail Vision and uh, in cooperation with Sierra because that was great. I think, uh, yeah. Well, I played that before King's Quest Seven. It was with a, a female protagonist who wasn't uh, yeah, um, uh, who had not to be saved by a prince or whatever, and I loved it. <laughs> And the third would be uh, any other King's Quest, whatever it's five or six or not two, not the original <laughs> two. <laughs> But uh, yes, and then of course, Torn Shivers. I just love Shivers. Yeah, there are so many, as you said. Well, it's hard to make a selection, really. Yes, it's too hard. And uh, well, I would say let's just keep gaming. Well, I uh, got one last question. So, Rudy, um, if someone is new to the King's Quest Sierra genre, adventure genre, and see what he watches our video now, and uh, yeah, w want to uh, want to start um, adventure games, what would you recommend uh, this person? Uh, what he should play? first or she or she yeah sorry mm -hmm. uh, if okay. it's the first time to play a classic adventure game yeah classic adventure yeah uh, well I, i wouldn't go for uh, gabriel knight well it's a, a great story and all that it's 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 it can get quite complex so i'd go for a more um you know where a more simple um in order to get so that, that they would get used to uh, the game style, you know, for, for classic point and click or, or uh, yeah, we go for a point and click. It's, it's, it seems more um, logical, easier to get used to than, than a text parser. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and a game where uh, the, the puzzles are not too complicated. Um, well, if, it, if uh, that uh, person is a uh, young male, I'd say go for Leisure Suit Larry. <laughs> uh, like a Larry Love for Sale would be a great one to start with. If you know, of course, uh, that's uh, um, for maybe the little bit more adult audience. Um, otherwise, uh, Dorin's Passage is also one that, that you could really get you into the ad, uh, adventure gaming uh you know to just get used to the uh to the style right of, of, of these classic adventure games yeah yeah and i um, agree because if you if you die and you can die in taurus passage you can just restart at the last point where you were successful and uh, oh, yeah, it's not hard. like in, in yeah. all the other uh, earlier games of sierra uh you died like every off. second <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, so, and, so new adventure gamers should definitely not start with King's Quest 3 or King's Quest 2. <laughs> definitely not. Not, not, no. You know, you, you run into, uh, there's so many ways to die in there. And yeah, yeah. as you said, you, you can't immediately recover unless you save early, save often, as they say uh, all the and time. I always said yes. <laughs> so I would go from... Uh, from you know with the with the point and click interface from the early to mid 90s something where the puzzles are not too complicated right yeah. um and and you know and once you get used to that you can go for the more complicated uh games uh like gabriel knight or uh or like rama or lighthouse those are um, some more of the tougher ones oh, really great yes. games but lighthouse definitely. was a good one too it was a really great game ah, i love the value. Yeah. Yeah, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's also a tough one, the, those puzzles in that one, but uh, nonetheless highly recommended, but not for a beginning adventure, I'd say. No. No, I made a let's play from it, and uh, it is difficult, although you cannot really die, or you, you don't... I was amazed there are not any dead ends in that game. You can it, always you sneak have. out somewhere. And no, I found no, that... There, there are... Uh, there, has multiple endings, lighthouse, and you yeah, multiple, but no it. dead ends. But no, no dead ends. No. no, no, not at all, not one. And yes, you have the multiple endings, and uh, I played them all. <laughs> and uh, that was an amazing game. Yes, right. We didn't mention that before, so yes. 
Lighthouse. Highly recommended. Play it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Rudy. I think uh, we've been talking for nearly two, one and a half hours or so. And thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. And Great to be on the show. Uh, if we talk about any other uh, Sierra game, we might invite you back in. Um, Marco plays DOS games right when does it start? Um, what do you mean? Uh, so we are talking for like uh, one and a half hour n now and... Um... And we've come to an end now. <laughs> <laughs> but you can uh, re-watch the stream after we're finished here. Yes, exactly. Well, thank you very much, Rudy, and uh, keep gaming, and keep up with the great work on Sierra Chess, and have a nice weekend. You too. Thank you again for having me. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.